Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Hernandez Monterrosa. My advisor is Dr. Shinzo Kagahara, and I am a master's student at UF. Uh, today, I, I'm really happy to share with you about my study uh, titled Post Planting Root Growth Dynamics and Morphology of Bare Root and Plug Strawberry Transplants and Their Impact on Field Performance. As an introduction, I would like to share with you that in the blue lines, we can see the average price per flat for strawberries in during the year. And in the red bars, you can see the Florida strawberry production uh, in each month during the season. Something really important to mention here is that growers can get really good prices per flat during the months of December and January. This is really good and for them so they can get good prices for their fruit. But something we have to mention too is that production is not maximum in December, but it is shifted towards February or March. So growers have been using for a long time bare root transplants and now they are using or adopting more the use of block transplants. And there are several reasons for that that we're going to explore here. And one of them is like growers have been planting during the months of October, middle October, early October, but now they are shifting uh, to earlier, planting early, in, for example, in late September or middle September. This is due because they want to get the plants established quicker and uh, have early yield during these months of December. But there is something tricky here because strawberry plants, they require uh, from 60 to 80 Fahrenheit degree in order to establish uh, better. Now I would like to mention some advantages of bare root transplants. Uh, bare root transplants have low price per plant. Uh, they are easy to handle at planting time. They usually come in boxes from 500 to 1,000 plants per box. And some of the disadvantages are that most of the roots are desiccated and not functional. As you can see in the close-up image, the roots look uh, desiccated and damaged when we get them from the nursery. Uh, they require overhead irrigation for about uh, 10 to 15 days. And this also increases the risk of disease associated with this overhead irrigation. Uh, they have a slower establishment compared to uh, plug transplants. On the other hand, plug transplants, most of the roots are alive and functional. As you can see in the close up image, the roots look fresh and white. And no or little overhead irrigation is required after planting. Some growers they use uh, just to be safe, they do the overhead irrigation from one to three days. They have a quicker establishment and uh, higher yields. The disadvantages are that these plug transplants cost up to three to four times more compared to a bare root plant. They are a little bit more difficult to handle at planting time. They usually come in uh, plastic trays and it's a little bit of more work to carry them around in the field. So for this study, our objectives was one, we conducted a rhizotrome experiment to characterize initial growth dynamics and morphology of bare root and plug strawberry transplants. Second, we conducted a field experiment to examine plant growth and yield performance. Some root type definitions, initial roots, we call them or name them the ones, the roots that the plants come with from the nursery, and new roots are the roots developing from the tip of initial roots or the roots coming from the ground. Materials and methods for the rhizotrome experiment we conducted the experiment at GCREC in Baum. Uh, during the months of October and November in 2017 for 42 days. And the plant material that we use is Florida Radiance cultivar. 
uh, the experimental design was a randomized complete block design, two treatments, bed root and block transplants, six replications, meaning that we have one plan, the rhizotron. For the field experiment, uh, we conducted it in the same place, GCREC, uh, in the season uh, October 2019 to February 2020. Same material, Florida Radiance, and the experimental design was a randomized complete block design, two treatments, the same treatments, four replications, and in this case we used 16 plants per treatment or per plot. <coughs> For the rhizotrum experiment setup, we used the soil and collected the soil from the fumigated soils of the strawberry fields, and we packed the soil using the uh, bulk soil density in order to keep similar conditions for the root development. Uh, we kept the rhizotrum steady, inclined at 30 degree angle in order to promote root growth on the bottom of bottom side of the containers, as you can see in the uh, bottom right picture, and also we cover the rhizotrons in order to keep the roots in darkness. For the data collection and the overhead photos, we use a digital camera in order to get the overhead photos. Uh, we calculated the canopy projected area using a ImageJ software. For the root images, we use a top bench scanner and we scan both sides of the rhizotrums in order to get most of the roots that were in contact with the window. Once we have the photos, we analyze them and calculated the root projected area using ImageJ software as well. This is how the, the plants look at planting time. On the left, you can see the bare roots. This is how we get them from the nursery. And on the right, you can see log transplants. And this is how they look when we plant them in the rhizotrops. To start with the results of the uh, rhizotrop experiment, one, uh, when we look at the canopy projected area results, we can see in the red lines log transplants and in the blue lines we can see bare root transplants. We can see there was a significant difference in canopy projected area at 21 days after planting we found the highest um, or the largest difference with up to 135% larger canopy projected area for block transplants compared to bare root. And at the end of the experiment, there was a still a 61% larger canopy area compared to uh, bare root transplants. And we can see it visually in these photos uh, where you can see in the left, bare root transplants and in the right, uh, block transplants. As you can see, there is a larger canopy area. They develop larger and faster canopy area compared to bare root. And when we could take a look at the roots, comparing bare root and plug transplants root morphology, we found something really uh, interesting. And you can see bare root on the top images and plugs in the bottom images. When we take a look at 14 days after planting, we see in bare root transplants, that the roots, that the new roots are developing from the tip of initial roots, and they are developing few new roots coming from the uh, crown as well. But on the other hand, when we see plug transplants, we can see clearly that initial roots continue to develop, and also they produce new roots coming from the crown. When we look at 42 days after planting, we can see an important root distribution in the soil. For example, in bare root transplants, we can see the roots look more uh, localized, like in the middle of the container or, or the rhizotrum. But in the other hand, in plug transplant, the roots look like more uniform and spread in the soil profile. 
we divided these two, we divided the, the rhizotrons in two depth, zero to 15 and 15 to 30 centimeters. And this is what we found. From zero to 15 centimeters depth, root projected area show no difference in this uh, zero to 15 centimeters depth. But when we look at 15 to 30 centimeters depth, we found very uh, big difference between both. Uh, at the end of the experiment, log transplant have 246% larger root projected area compared to uh, bare root, meaning that they can explore deeper soil profiles compared to a uh, bare root. And when we look at the total or combine both, we didn't find any significant difference, but there was a still a 46% larger root projected area for blood transplant. Now we want to see the field experiment results too. So uh, for canopy growth, we found a similar trend compared comparing both rhizotron and field uh, results. As you can see in the photos, 20 days and 54 after 24 days after planting, you can see that canopy area or canopy growth is bigger in block transplants compared to bare root transplant. But when we go at the end of, almost at the end of the experiment of the season, 142 days, uh, we didn't find any difference. Plants look similar in size, which makes sense because they uh, grow uh, to the sa same level of in the canopy size. And when we look at the data, we found that there was a 39% larger canopy area canopy projected area at 28 days after planting and 26% larger canopy projected area for block transplants compared, compared to bare root. But at the end, we these plants, the canopy is similar, which makes sense. The block, block transplants have a faster establishment and this is what we are seeing here. And the most important part here for growers is the marketable yield. And we found that block transplants produce 52% higher early yield compared to bare root transplants on December. And as you remember at the beginning of the presentation, this is when growers can get uh, the most uh, or the best price per flat for their fruit. And even there was no significant difference, but total season yield, total season yield uh, was 23% larger compared to bare root transplants. In conclusions, these results suggest that rapid establishment and improved fruit earliness of block transplants is due partly to their functional initial roots that can continue to develop and quickly explore the soil for water and nutrients after transplanting. Uh, this information in this study will help us to optimize and improve the fertilization practice for each type of transplant. An example is pre-plant fertilization for plug transplants that could be used efficiently due to the quick and extensive root development in deeper soil profiles. I would like to thank FSGA for their support for this study and also to my lab members and my advisor, Dr. Shinzo Kagahara. And with that, I will take some questions if you have. Thank you very much.